Hi all, welcome to the channel. In this video, I am going to do a mock interview for one of the Automation Anywhere A360 RPA developer. In case you wish that you want to do a mock interview with me, you can contact on these email IDs, contact at rpafeed.com or rpafeed at gmail.com. With that, let's get started. Hi Nandu, uh, can you please introduce yeah. yourself? Yeah, sure. Uh, thank you. Uh, so myself is uh, Nandu. So I do have over six years of experience uh, in IT industry. Uh, even though the same relevant uh, experience also into uh, RPA uh, sector, uh, where I'm my uh, primary skill set uh, is automation anywhere. And other than that, I do have uh, kind of little hands on on uh, UI path and power automate as well. But my primary, which I'm working from long pain and automation anywhere only so mm -hmm. i started working from nine version uh, automation where nine until a360 mm -hmm. uh so uh, so far uh i have automated many kind of applications where involved in uh web interfaces i mean nothing but ui automations desktop windows based sharepoint mm -hmm. and mainframes and erp applications like sap and oracle so by using uh, ui based automation and also by using dl based automations and so far, uh, more than 50 plus bots that I have delivered in my total career and uh, worked with different, different kind of uh, domain clients like into logistics, pharmacy, mm -hmm. banking, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. life sciences, and um, many medical device manufacturing companies, right? And retail and industries. And uh, so those kind of clients that I have worked and delivered a couple of bots and uh, coming to technically, yeah. So into uh, in terms of technically, uh, I am very uh, I I do have very hands on in automation where uh, in control room, but also in the components where uh, development part. But mm -hmm. uh, every as in in even in SDLC. So mm -hmm. so I do have very hands on experience in all SDLC pages from uh, from phase of uh, requirement gathering requirement until moving the product to the go live. Mm -hmm. So all the pages that I have hands on uh, experience. Uh, yeah, th this is a brief about my uh, file. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Thanks for that. So uh, what, what I could make sense out of it is that most of the cases or most of the projects that you have worked on are related to Automation Anywhere and Automation Anywhere A360, the new version of it, as well as the previous version. So uh, my questions would be here more specific to A360. Okay. Okay. So moving on to the next question okay so can you please explain the error handling in a360 and uh, more specifically what is the use of finally action in error handler package yes got it yeah so uh so if you talk about error handler package definitely uh so compared with the late, uh, legacy versions it is modified and they have updated options as well. Mm -hmm. uh, so error handler package is uh, nothing but if, if, if something the bot fails in any of the situations like in abnormal or ex, any any exception during the execution, bot execution. Mm -hmm. So if you are not keeping this particular error handler package, so definitely it is very difficult to identify the error, where, what is the error and where it is coming from and which when the error got occurred, right? Those kind of Deeper, uh, those kind of things that we cannot capture without using the error handler. That's why error handler is in place uh, to uh, handle these kind of errors. And where we have four options in error handler package, try, catch, mm -hmm. finally, through. So try is nothing but it's a block where we're keeping all our codes in each and every box that we are developing. Yeah. So in the, in the try block itself, we are writing all the line of codes, whatever the uh, I mean validations that we are uh, inserting in the try block. So if any 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 issues will be happening within the try blocks, the control will be shifted to the cache block and the cache block where we are defining our error information like error description line number. We are mm -hmm. treating the uh, variables and we are keeping it and we are storing. Uh, once the control is moving from try block to uh, cache blocks automatically those information will be available in the variables so that variables the by help of those variables so we are writing the information in logs in the either we can take all the same whatever the exception 
handling mm-hmm. that should mm-hmm. should be placed in the catch block once the control move from try block to catch block and through is nothing but if any logical error occurs in within the try block so we can use this through action to create a error conditions which immediately shift that execution from uh, in in the try block to catch block directly and so we can also keep some custom kind of error message in the through action property mm-hmm. uh, so that that particular error message will be moved to catch block and will store in the error description variable that is nothing but through and finally see when we are using this final action in the error handler uh, so when regardless whether it is try and catch block regardless i mean regardless of whether an execution exception whether occur or not occur it doesn't matter so automatically our particular execution will go to the final block and it will uh, what is the use, what, what the exactly happen in the final block is nothing but when execution will move to the final block uh, so we can we are placing some cardy kind of information either we are keeping all uh, some code to uh, close all the activities uh, before ending the bot execution right so those things will be happening in the final block nothing nothing any logical we just using it to keep all audit information and also to close all uh, open activities that is what final block yeah 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 so you explained in detail so for example finally in a nutshell if we consider so finally would be uh, a place where the code will always get executed and it's a good place to have your close or clean up tasks basically closing all the connections clean up uh, or clean up the application okay yeah yes. so yeah let's move on to the next question okay so uh, what is the difference between uh, the excel basic and excel advanced package you have worked on these right Oh yes, so I worked there. Yeah. So basically, in Automation three hundred and sixty uh, related to Excel, we have a three packages: Excel Basic, Excel Advanced, and Excel MS three hundred and sixty five. It's a web based. Okay. Mm-hmm. So there is a three a kind of three Excel available. So the difference is why the major difference is first of all the Basic will work without having Excel software on a machine, so it will work in a back end mode. Okay. So there mm-hmm. is the you no know, Excel will be open while during the execution of Basic actions. And coming to the advanced, so the desktop Excel software should be installed on our desktop. Then it will work in a front end mode. Nothing but we can see the Excel is in open and what what is exactly performing the actions in the Excel. That is what the Excel advanced. And three sixty five is a web based Excel. Some additional, uh, I mean, uh, web based Excel where it it is also open the URL, uh, either network drive path, either the shared drive path, whatever we given. But it 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 will it won't see the validations. If the validations will be happen back and once you are refreshing the browser then only the validations everything will be in place after execution okay the answer support uh, also this is one major differences uh, other than this uh, basic support uh, basic package will allow only a dot xlsx for file extension of excel mm-hmm. and excel advanced support all excel spreadsheet almost the xls xlsx xlsm and also txt html pdf dot slk there are many extensions will allow And Excel 365 supported only three Excel file format: .dot xls, uh, .dot xls, and .dot xls. That is what uh, another difference. And features wise, actually, if we talk about the Excel Basic, has very minimal feature and uh, does not allow to execute the macro in the Basic Excel, uh, where we can use Excel Advanced in place to uh, perform any kind of Excel validations to. uh for, for to for find out uh, i mean which relate there is a categories like cell uh, any kind of uh, cell update delete cell set cell values and window mm-hmm. relate i'm uh, sorry uh, table related operations and row and column related operations and worksheet and work workbook operations anything like uh, protect and protect delete create append many kind of this kind of excel operations we have in advanced excel and the same way e3 excel 365 also very familiar like advanced uh features the same features also have available in the uh, excel 365 okay so uh, if i were to build a bot uh, yeah. where i don't have a excel licensed installation on 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 my runner machine so which package would be useful here definitely definitely where we have, we do not have the ms office mm-hmm. uh, license or what something definitely we'll go with the basic yeah. uh, package okay. uh but 
that's what we have only minimal features to perform we do mm -hmm. not have any advanced okay okay yeah got it let's move on to the next question so uh we talked about excel advanced and excel basic so this is a follow up question on that so can you please Fine. explain uh, or like highlight five such actions from excel advanced package along with the uh, usage definitely yeah. definitely see uh, as i told uh, just back so we have a this we have a uh, excel advanced has combination of many options but yeah say so if you categorize those options the right, cell valid cell i mean the particular cell validations row and column validations table validations and append workbook if you talk about cell validations where we have a delete cell functionality to delete the cell and where we have find the next empty cell functionality to move our cursor position to uh, the next next empty cell mm -hmm. and find operations to find the text the given source uh, text whether it is available or not available and it will be uh, storing in a list variable and we can use get cell address to update the cell uh, to address the i mean to update the to get the cell value to variable and get cell color so it will give the html for uh, html cell color for to uh, our variable so we can use get multiple test to order to get the range of cell data and can be assigned to a data table variable so mm -hmm. we can get the get uh, we can get the number of rows by using get number of rows uh, action we can yeah. get the cell Single cell, either active cell, either specific cell. We can go to the cell either below, either right, either up. If you want to move your cursor positions to left and right and below and upper positions in the current cell activity, we can also do that. Go mm -hmm. to the uh, read cell formula. Like the this is also one of the option where we can read the background uh, cell uh, Excel cell formula. We can also use replace uh, actions to replace the uh, replace the new text with the existing values. And we can also use set cell and set cell formulas to order to uh, set the cell uh, with the normal text either with the uh, to insert the formula that is cell validations coming to the row and column validations so we 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 do have a get column name to order to get the column name uh, we can we do have get row number so it will give the row number and we can hide a, uh, columns and rows we can insert and delete uh, columns we can read the column we can read the row uh, we can mm -hmm. remove the blank rows in the spreadsheet and uh, we can we can select the rows and columns we can unhide the rows and columns those are rows and column validations and table validations category so we have a delete table column option so we can also use the filter table where we can filter the data by text either by a, we can apply the filter table and get table range we can also get the data based on table range we can insert the table column we can sort the table by ascending and descending and we can uh, those are the table validations so related to workbook validations we have uh, append workbook nothing but so one existing excel we can take it and we can append with another workbook we can mm -hmm. close the workbook we can convert the excel into pdf we can create our new workbook with the respect to, with the uh, custom sheets uh, we can use open activity uh, to open the excel to protect we can also protect with the password we can unprotect the uh, password protected workbooks Okay. Yeah, yeah, so these yeah, these yeah. are work, uh, workbook related and also we have worksheet related options like we can also restrict the we can also access the password protected worksheet we can append the worksheet and we can create the worksheet we can delete the worksheet we can disable or enable uh, screen updates and we can also get the uh, current sheet name current sheet, I mean, sheet counts okay so th these are kind of options we have in excel advanced package okay so you have i think i think you have used them all so ah uh, yes yes yeah. okay got it let's move on to the next question how about uh, ocr did you use any ocr technology in your bot or in general uh, what is yes, ocr actually, yeah. uh, yes i have used hmm. uh, so first of all ocr optical character recognition uh, so the package will help us to extract the text from uh, windows either in any specific customization areas either mm -hmm. uh, text from images uh, if you are stored any uh, image in the file either in the path or we can also use those file path either uh, the machine path or a website uh, we can get that image and we can extract, extract the text but only few formats it will allow like uh, .jpg or .jpg bmp 
PNG form, only few formats it allowed to extract. Uh, other than that, I mean, uh, particularly the OCR commands, I did not, I never used, I did not got chance to use it. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. as, uh, yeah, as internal, I just explored myself what is OCR and which OCR right now the people are using. Uh, but here, Abe Fine Reader, I, I guess uh, Abe Fine Reader, uh, just correct me if I am wrong, but Abe Fine Reader is there using in A360 package to order to extract the text from those images. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There are many, I, actually, if you go for yeah, document automation on IQ bot behind the scene and the I, engine, yeah, there are yeah, I can, other I can give you those, actually. Yeah. Because we have, as of now, we have five, uh, Abe, I mean, uh, OCR engines, uh, available in A360 IQ bot if you talk about the default one was Tesseract and we can also change this in the settings.txt file that where we can change the uh, default engine also but yeah as of now it is allow Tesseract, Abbey Fine Reader and Microsoft Azure Computer Vision and Google Vision API and also one of the Japanese one Tegaki API so these are the uh, right now OCR engine five OCR engines available in uh, A360 yeah that would be that would be my follow up question for you i mean we have <laughs> covered here but uh, i yeah how many types of ocrs are provided by a360 so yeah i mean and which is best i mean uh, now we have you have already discussed right what are the types of ocr can you please uh, yes. quickly uh, uh, provide a list of the ocr engines that are supported in a360 and uh, so far which is best as per your experience or your board development experience Yes, correct. Okay, so uh, I have used Abbey actually because uh, right now it is IQBot is no more and we have a document automation in place, right? So I have used Abbey engine uh, to order to extract uh, bulk in bulk uh, invoice formats. I mean, uh, different kind of formats mm -hmm. by in the recent clients, but not in current client, but recent in the previous employees and recent clients that I have worked for. Uh, banking right so at the time so we have uh, we have created a couple of instances a uh, couple of instances uh, to order to read the data from the uh, scan invoices mm -hmm. uh, where in place uh, the invoice everything is different format because the uh, the the invoices coming from the coming from uh, different sources from different vendors right uh, but the if you want me to explain the set of steps that, that how we are doing that also I can I can do how it will be um no i think i we don't need steps here but um yeah what what i would like to uh just you to highlight here is uh so you you're saying as per your experience uh abby is the best engine so far in the ocr and can you uh, list, yeah uh, yeah can you list that uh various types of ocr engines like just a list of them i mean whichever you so feel are, are there in either uh, yeah. Tesseract, Tesseract OCR 4 is the default one actually and other than that we have a Abbey and another one is Microsoft Azure Computer Vision and Google Vision API and Tegaki. Okay, okay. Okay, with that uh, let's move on to the next question. So uh, could you please explain bot deployment process in production once the bot is developed? Yeah, so actually... Uh, Definitely. So, bot deployment process in production. Uh, once it is, see, first of all, predict this. So, once we're done the development and uh, the UAT and everything, so production readiness is very important. So, production readiness in the sense, whatever the prerequisites that we do, we do require for, uh, I mean, setting up the machine and setting up the control room, right? And setting up the roles and creating the credentials as per the previous environments and uh, enabling i mean because admin admin able to do all these things so admin is the more first privileged role uh, to order to perform the deployments and we should have the proper permissions like to export and import the packages into the product environment and also the taking from the previous con, uh, environments so the access i mean the roles of the exporting and uh, importing mm -hmm. and once you've done all these prerequisites in terms of the control room prod and then about the infrastructure readiness. So the infrastructure readiness that the machines or the whatever the machines that we are using for the deployment and whatever the required applications are uh, to be installed in the machine to order to uh, run that execution, right? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. credentials, all the credential resources should be 
allowed in place like the that should be already created in control room but yeah that should be uh, proper access to the respective screens each and every screen involved in the automation right so these kind of infrastructure ready uh, infrastructure mm -hmm. setup also one of the so, requisites so you yeah so you kind of uh, follow a checklist like a production readiness checklist where uh, once your bot is passed from uat yes, yes. then we are following uh, the product uh, product uh, i mean pro, pro deployment readiness that's what okay. uh, the category okay. is control room setup and control mm -hmm. room category the like control room setup in a sense the roles should be created assigned and the credentials and, should be updated and by any chance credit. do you uh, promote your bot or is there a different team in your current uh, project uh, in current project uh, because it's a uh, one of the uh, one of the financial clients so mm -hmm. they are their own production team because uh, i'm i'm just giving is uh, only the till development part i am the involving so we do not have any kind of privileges or uh, something okay. else to do in the production okay. missions and but do you guys follow they, any uh, automated uh, uh, model for deploying code from one control room to another control uh, room uh, not really because uh, what i am aware uh, because i i have involved but not in much but there is no automation method to deploy like they are not using any apis they are not using any other third party tools to deploy the code but simply whatever the traditional method that we have in control room to export and import those things only they are doing okay it's a, it's basically a blm package so the manually they will export uh, it yes, and import they are it in the, the blm package by the help of export button and they they are okay. keeping it in a git repository from the source from there they are you uh, i mean importing it into the production okay okay got it so let's move on to the next question so this is a follow up question uh, did you on on my previous question so did you face any challenge during uh, any of your bot development and how did you overcome that see uh, technically in i mean technically in the control room like doing when we are doing there is no but the challenge is in a sense uh, the, the, definitely there is a few mistakes from our end like the roles not been assigned for exporting and importing so it will create issues that those folder will not be visible when when we are exporting uh, either the export button itself not in active where uh, because the role will be not assigned uh, uh, other than this when we are uploading a packages we uh, by mistake we are not adding the dependencies of the taskbot files and so where it is deploying into prod and it is again uh, rework to I mean, rework to get go uh, go back to the UAT and get the proper dependencies and again uh, mm -hmm. moving to the prod and we are when we are uploading right. So the dependency file missing those are the very common mistakes that we are doing and again re realizing after production and when we are running it. And other than this, yes, there will there will be a challenges like from the business end. Like uh, once we are once they pro, once we are started running the bot, the bot is uh, launching the applications where. Few of screens that uh, few for few of uh, navigations the bot doesn't have the permissions to perform. So at that time, definitely bot failed and uh, due to uh, un uh, I mean unidentified window title font those kind of issues that we are getting. And other than that, uh, when we are deploying uh, uh, this one, sorry, uh, DLL, right? So when uh, I mean this is something that we have faced when we are doing migration. Mm -hmm. uh, so we, we we also have a uh, issues while we doing deployments of uh, metabots once uh, convert and I mean uh, after migration uh, metabot DLL right so the, the DLL once you are uh, in place also still it is not uh, working as expected and uh, that is also one of the issue I have, we have faced and after that uh, whatever the uh, production readiness is not in place like. Uh, uh, not have access for uh, the application uh, when it is when you are working as you way what I mentioned right? so it is it will fail because definitely uh, the mirror uh, dev, dev versus pro definitely not sometimes it is a, exactly like a mirror because when the mm -hmm. both environment is not in same in UI uh, definitely many chances the bot will fail in UI automations like the particular domax pass changes uh, might different from the dev to production right and uh, Either the the format they are giving from uh, input format, right? Uh, input file, either input validations are not in agreed format uh, compared with the dev one production also. Uh, that will be uh, creating an issue uh, technically. Uh, bot will fail, right? 
and yeah these are the issues that's correct that's correct so um yeah let's move on to the next question um i'd like you to briefly share or explain about your last project or your current project okay so i worked for one of the financial client uh, financial client uh, where it involves um uh financial uh, trans, uh lending operations okay so here actually uh, so which i automated three processes here uh, the one process uh, is nothing but it's a, just i will give a high level process uh, so we have a customer so they want to be opting the uh, statement of transactions whether it is into uh, printed either uh, software okay printed either e statement so they mm -hmm. will give they will submit a request in the web application the request come to robotic queue i mean the particular internal uh, portal so the what bot does the bot will go to login and it will get the statement request whether it is true or false true in a sense they are opting for e statement and if it is false means they are opting for printed statement so the according to the true or false condition the bot will go to the uh, financial portal Mm -hmm. and it will uh, it will select either e, e statement either printed statement depends upon the request that is one process and second one is uh, it is a kind of pay off pay off method so usually the request will be coming uh, coming to the financial institute uh, either via email either via fax so what will happen so the bot has to look at the email either uh, fax both into the email part based on the subject line they used to download the uh, particular attachments and uh, on the portal after that so it it is supposed to log in a internal one of the internal web application mm -hmm. and it will it will check all the checks uh, based on the in input given it will enter the input id input transaction id and it will uh, check that uh, statement report whether it is valid or not valid uh, it is matching with the request uh, coming from the uh, customer and also versus the particular internal application so accordingly they, it will go for further validations where it is three applications in one is web sales force another one is internal uh, two desktop applications actually so here we know we we got uh, we, we also got issues we faced actually with the desktop application where mm -hmm. it mm -hmm. purely was based on the id and the legacy values right now controls because uh, there is no domain path for that so okay uh, here we also approach some other alternative approach to overcome uh, this is one process another one is uh, different one like it's also frame payment method it's posting the payment method uh, nothing but the customer gives the uh, authority to pull the payments from other institution to uh, within the financial institution then the system uh, pulls the payment on the given due date and apply to the loan so it will check all the prerequisites for the loan and it will validate it properly and also it will go across two applications to check all the parameters in place and all the uh, all the documents are attached whether the documents is invalid or not valid the provided mm -hmm. information in the attachments also valid or not valid so that finally it will send for the final approval yeah so these are the okay. three process that I okay have. okay that's uh, you are currently handling okay fine just a quick time check uh, uh we we need to cover few more so yeah let's moving on to the next question uh, have you used uh, excel as a db and uh, what was yes, the need many times. why yes, yeah. if there are already excel advanced package available then what was the need for you to use excel as a db can you please explain on that yes yes see excel advanced in place with the advanced features definitely yes but uh, it is a front end method and also uh, compare with db it's a kind of kind uh, optimization purpose the, it is a time consuming part uh, when you go with excel advanced open and do the row by row validations and everything but a database purely back end method uh, where we are firing the sql queries to perform any kind of insert update and to get, to retrieve the data so this optimization part i'll definitely uh, we have prepared database even as a client suggested database uh, to go with uh, so we, we the, that's that the reason only the optimization part and also the reliable very scalable if you go with the database there's few scenarios not in every scenario uh, when we have a very bulk data uh, we really want to update a bulk number of uh, rows mm -hmm. or columns with the respective values right 
so that because in excel advance we can't do that uh, if you want to update something that if you have to go by row by row yeah either yeah. column by cell by cell right that kind mm-hmm. of uh, because the optimization but yeah okay fine uh, let's move on to the next question have you worked on rest apis ah uh, yes uh, i worked on rest apis so i did not use all the methods uh, mm-hmm. mentioned in rest apis but only the one or two methods that i have worked on actually okay yeah okay. i have used get and post both i worked on okay what is the difference between get and post uh so get method is uh, it, it will retrieve the information uh, whatever mm-hmm. the uri based on the given uri it will mm-hmm. simply retrieve the information and it will store the value in the response of js uh, js when and that is what get method and post uh, it, it will create a, a resource by whatever the given uri right it will whatever the uh, given uri mm-hmm. it will mm-hmm. create the resource on the given uri uh, but the parameter that we should be uh, passed in the request body okay okay and so in general you know about apis how that works so we there is an authentication mechanism and there is a token mechanism so are you aware about it or uh, not you didn't get much a chance actually, but yeah i am aware because i am aware but not much actually okay. because first we are we trying to do the same thing in postman mm-hmm. and based on the token uh, the uh, token and we are, again we are going implementing in the rest of services package okay okay with that uh, let's move on to the next question so we already like i already asked you about the database package the sql command so uh, what what uh, did you use a store procedure or any any other specific uh, commands from database package in your current project or any previous project uh yes actually so when i am working with excel as a db i did not use because we can't use a stored procedure but uh, if when i am working with sql yes i have used actually mm-hmm. and because yeah uh, because when you are see uh, when you are connecting excel as a db well, only few matrix will support like connect disconnect read from and export data table and insert and update right the only those functions will work when we are connecting excel as a db and when you come with sql as a db even sql as a db also uh, managed stored procedure will not work from the package the rest of things will work and i have used sort procedure to order to update bulk value of data so there is a uh, data where i need to go and check multiple conditions at a time in a single group query yeah. and so yeah. order to do that so i have written a sort procedures so it will so that it will go and check query by query in the sort procedure and it will do the validations and it will update either it will do some deletions in the uh, database okay so did you see any performance uh, difference like in in uh, many in your previous project you might not have used sql as a database or uh, you just have done excel queries and uh, in in any of other project you might have used sql packages right a database package so did you see any difference in terms of performance a uh, performance between between um, just excel automation and using database package for automation uh yeah you you're saying excel basic or advanced versus excel as db or... yeah for example uh, you have an excel sheet with uh, let's say 10000 records and you have to perform an automation on that excel so same yeah. thing can be achieved either via excel advanced package or via yes, connecting correct. using correct. the database package so there's uh, a did you use both of them and did you see any uh, performance improvement definitely there is a lot of action because uh, that is what most uh, thing performance optimization uh, yeah. so when you are using basic either at advanced excels uh, definitely when you are uh, the validations whatever the validations that we are doing compare with database time consuming because if you take excel basic uh, even doesn't how uh, to update bulk cells uh, at the single time and we need to uh, like it will go on update cell by cell right and that is what something with excel basic the same with advanced excel it will the excel should be in open and it will go on check cell by cell either row by row and it, according to the according to validation spot definitely time consuming if you go any of the excel advanced feature but when you connecting excel as a db 
uh, it, it because we are connecting a one one external source as a database where it will work back end uh, it will it will fire the queries whatever the sql queries that we are writing i in in second in milliseconds it will use the results and it is, can be stored in the data table and mm -hmm. you can also use data table package to order to perform uh, to read that instead uh, performance wise definitely uh, definitely there will be a lot of performance when you are using uh, this excel basic advanced and compare with database actually okay okay yeah with that i think we we are done with the uh, interview so okay. thanks for attending to this and giving your time so um, i'd like you to share your feedback for example how how was it like how did you feel the entire conversation uh yeah it, it is really helpful so do you have any question for me or any feedback for me uh at this moment i do not have 